uh, thank you very much again. Uh, thanks to the organizer for giving me the uh, opportunity two times. And this time, uh, I'll be speaking on from clinical trials to clinical practice and raising the standard in the hormone receptor positive metastatic breast cancer management. So uh, we will be discussing a little bit uh, uh, data which probably uh, we might have missed in uh, the recent meetings and we'll just highlight those missing data in my this presentation. So if you look, look at the relatively high overall response rate with CDK4 presentation in the first line, we see that, that there is an unprecedented uh, response rate of uh, reaching up to 55.53 in Paloma 2 to the second line setting and beyond the response rate can reach as high as uh, up to 48% uh, in the which we, we have seen in the Monarch uh, 2 trial. So th there is no doubt that this uh, combination of endocrine therapy with CDK4-6 inhibition inhibitors are uh, a really very good combination. And besides this, uh, it is very important for us to know at this juncture that the, this uh, the response rates are 11 to 15% higher than the aromatase inhibitor monotherapy. So this tells us very clearly that you need to use a combination of endocrine plus CDK4-6 inhibitor instead of uh, aromatase inhibitor alone uh, in the first line. And uh, this, uh, this information is also important for all of us that the overall response rate with the single agent chemotherapy and metastatic breast cancer is around 40%. So the answer is very clear that which molecule or which combination we need to use in hormone receptor positive metastatic breast cancer. And when we look at the progression free survival in uh, all these first line trials, you will find that the curves are so very similar to each other. So we know that the, the drugs is uh, all the CDK4-6 inhibitor almost are equally efficacious, but the Curve were, curve were almost same with each other because the trial design was in such a uh, was trial design was in such a way it was designed uh, that the patient population was uh, almost identical in each of the trial. If by any chance that the patient population is different, then the survivor curve may be different from each other, but that does not draw any conclusion. Basically, these are all very good molecules and uh, is, is the standard of care. Uh, these days in combination with the endocrine therapy. And there is a 43% prolongation in the progression free survival over the endocrine therapy with the, with the absolute difference of nearly 10 months. So the question, next question is that the, do we have any other agent beside aromatase inhibitor for hormone receptor positive in the first line setting? So initially the high dose uh, uh, fullestrant was tried in, uh, instead of 250 milligram, 500 milligram was attempted, but it showed that the uh, results were only satisfactory in the bone uh, with, without the visceral disease. And the visceral disease, the curves were uh, overlapping with each other in palestrant arm and the anastrozole. So it did not really benefit all the subgroup of these patients. So it took a little bit of, you know, uh, back seat, uh, then the combination arm. Then, then the next question was that, uh, uh, do we have an ideal endocrine partner with the CDK4-6 inhibitor uh, during the first line uh, setting beside aromatase inhibitor? So this question was, uh, we tried to answer this question in a phase two very well designed uh, Parsifal trial, which was presented at uh, ESCO 2020. So this the goal of the this Parsifal trial was to determine the optimal endocrine backbone in combination with the palbocyclic in the first line scenario. So in this phase two trial, the palvestrant plus palgocyclate was directly compared uh, with the electrojole plus palgocyclate. And the, the surprisingly, the non-inferiority uh, was not established in this trial and the subgroup analysis generally consistent with the overall conclusion and overall survival was also not different between the two arms. So result of this Parsifal trial was inconclusive and treatment decision should balance the preference of the patient and the clinician and the later treatment strategies because managing hormone receptor positive metastatic breast cancer is a continuum of care these days. So you need to, uh, you need to plan your first line therapy uh, very strategically. So uh, how does the result of Parsifal study translate into the clinical practice? So the data are very convincing that the more invasive less convenient and potentially more toxic route of using palmestrant is now not needed in the first line and patient may welcome a treatment with the 
simple oral tablet and be safe in the knowledge that it is uh, as good as the fullerstrand so the message is very clear that an all for all oral pill combination is the new standard care and uh, in the patients who are somehow allergic or somehow have uh, other reaction uh, history of reaction to aromatase inhibitor those are the very small the group of the patient where the fullerstrand can be combined with the cdk46 inhibitors so the, uh, the so now the next question after deciding that the which uh, drug which uh, endocrine partner should be used in the first line then the next the dilemma uh, in this cdk46 inhibitor is the o of overall survival so it is the most hyped trial is the paloma 3 so, so there was a 6.9 month longer overall survival with palbocyclic and palvastrin but the finding did not reach uh, statistical significance in intention to treat population while in comparison to uh, 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 the other trial which we use the same combination monolith 3 and the monarch 2 the, there was a clear cut uh, 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 overall survival advantage but we what we must know that there was not something wrong with the uh, palbocyclic it was the design of the trial and uh, uh, the palbocyclic uh, the paloma 3 trial which used the combination of palbocyclic and palvestrin the, uh, it is a very strong suggestion that probably uh, uh, the overall survival benefit would have been statistically significant in this trial. If the trial of the Paloma 3 was little bit larger and the, uh, the, and, uh, uh, the survival could have easily been uh, demonstrated. Because when we look at the uh, uh, progression free survival in the second line setting uh, using uh, in all the three on all the these three trials, uh, when we compare about the Paloma 3 and the Monarch 2, the uh, difference in the patient population was significant, uh, was significantly observed because in the Paloma 3, uh, 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 prior endocrine therapy or one prior chemotherapy was allowed, while in Monarch 2, only one prior endocrine therapy or no chemotherapy was allowed. So this was the uh, basic uh, design of the trial which resulted in non-statistical uh, significant uh, overall survival in Paloma 3. So, but if we dissect the data of Paloma 3, the, what happened to the endocrine sensitive population versus the uh, endocrine insensitive population. So, if you look at the endocrine sensitive population, if we had put all the patients of endocrine sensitive in Paloma 3 also, we could have achieved the uh, overall survival of nearly 40% with the hazard ratio of 0.72%. So this was the main uh, highlight I wanted uh, to pinpoint when we consider the overall the dilemma of overall survival in Paloma 3. And the the same issue with the premenopausal patient, uh, we can use any of the CDK46 inhibitor. You need to convert the premenopausal patient by using the GNR analog or the surgical oophorectomy and then treat them as the postmenopausal patient. And you can see that if we adopt this strategy, the survival curves are so very similar to each other. So in the, in, in the, 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 the all the these three molecules work beautifully in the premenopausal patient once we convert them into postmenopausal patient. The another highlight uh, of the Paloma 3 trial that uh, irrespective of the baseline ESR1 mutation status or the PIK3CA mutation status, the, the this molecule worked uh, very well and uh, the, the, you can see the a very impressive hazard ratio. So this was not a deterrent in using the palbocyclic in this group of the patient. So this was the another highlight of Paloma 3 besides uh, uh, artificially created uh, no difference in the overall survival versus its, its uh, uh, limit uh, usefulness, limited usefulness in the premenopausal patient. So this the, the this molecule palbocyclic work equally in all these subgroup of the patients. So basically what I want to highlight the point is when you need to compare the apples, you need to compare with the apples, not with the oranges. And if the, 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 if the issue of overall survival and uh, the efficacy in the premenopausal patients were really big, then probably this molecule wouldn't have find a place in the uh, NCCN's recent version uh, 62030, where all the molecules have been given the category one recommendation. So this is speaks of uh, this molecule that this is as good as the other molecule available in the market. So ABC 
502020 guideline informs us that the CDK four six inhibitor when combined with the endocrine therapy is the standard of care in patient with hormone receptor positive HER two negative advanced breast cancer. Since it achieves a substantial progression free survival benefit, significantly increase overall survival and I. And I may or may not maintain the low improved quality of life. The CDK46 inhibitor can be combined with aromatase inhibitor or will fluorescent uh, as per the uh, Parsifal data in the de novo or the recurrent advanced breast cancer in the first or second line and in case of primary or the secondary resistance. It will in both the settings uh, this molecule work will work uh, in the equal manner. So this recommendation applies to the postmenopausal woman to premenopausal women in combination with the LHRS agonist and to men also who are hormone receptor positive metastatic breast cancer, uh, but in combination with the LHRS agonist. Uh, and this was given a category 1A and 97% of the panelists in ABC5 agreed with these recommendations. So again, if we talk in terms of the ESMO MCBS scoring, which is a very, uh, you know, robust parameter to assess the efficacy of any molecule. So all the, the all the these three CDK46 inhibitor were given the uh, ISMO M MCBS score of three. So it and the hundred percent of the panelists who attended this meeting agreed that these molecules are uh, almost you know same and each can be used interchangeably. So this was the uh, uh, what I have discussed is the trial data. So now equally important uh, these days is that the, we need to discuss the real world data which complement the trial world data and what uh, I will highlight some points which will enumerate the clinical significance of the real world data. So what is the basic difference in the real world data versus the randomized uh, 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 or between the uh, randomized control trial. So, re so real world data is a non-interventional or observational and it is a, a usual cl care clinical practice all over the globe. And the outcome in the real world data is the effectiveness and economic assessments. And the population in the real world data is basically and wide, unrestricted, and few exclusion are there. And comparator is not there in, com uh, in the real world data. And uh, randomization and blinding is also not there in the real world data. Relevance is only for the clinical practice because not uh, the stringent criteria, the, the clinical trials have so many stringent criteria that not all patients can be put on the clinical trial. But at the same time, if we assess the efficacy of any regimen or any molecule, then real world data becomes as important as the clinical trial data. So real world data, we have flat iron data, polaris data, iris data, patient assistance program of the uh, various these molecule. We have Indian data which was presented in ESCO 2020 uh, by the Amit group and we also have very robust uh, real world data from uh, Rajiv Gandhi Cancer Institute and BL Kapoor also. So people are gradually realizing the importance and clinical significance of real world data that it cannot be ignored and it should be given the importance as good as the clinical trial data. So. Uh, uh, as I have enumerated that the randomized clinical trial have different features than the real world data and they basically the real world data complement the data from the clinical trial. And the clinic, uh, the real world data which do not randomize patient and bias may be introduced by prescribing pattern and the lack of uniform assessment, uh, which are the which eventually become the doubtful causal interpretation. So uh, what is the uh, new uh, method is that you don't take all the patients, uh, all the uh, all comers uh, in the real world data. But what do we do is that uh, we uh, select the same patient in both the arms which were treated in a very identical manner. So this is called the propensity score matching. So suppose if we have treated the thousand patients, uh, the, those were the all comers out of which we will select 200, 200 patient which were managed absolutely identically. So that uh, uh, you know we can draw some uh, inference or draw some observation from the propensity score um, matching. So this is a new terminology uh, uh, side by side the real world data which can give us some unanswered uh, uh, which can uh, answer some of the questions which were not answered in the clinical trial data.
So flat ion network, as I enumerated, uh, that this was a retrospective analysis of electronic health record from the flat iron health uh, longitudinal database in the United States of America by the community physicians of 1,416 HER2 positive metastatic breast cancer treated by the first line palgocyclic letrozole versus the letrozole. Of the 1,416 eligible patients, 906 patients were 1 is to 1 propensity score match to balance the characteristic and that eventually were the 453 for each cohort. And the median age of this patient in, the, in this was the 68.0 and 49, uh, nearly 50% patient had visceral disease. The real world progression free survival, it was a month from the start of palgocyclic plus letrozole or letrozole to death or the disease progression based on the clinical assessment or evidence by the radiological scan or the tissue biopsy. So this was the flat iron study where the total population was 772 in the combination arm out of which we took out the 464 patient and letrozole alone arm there were 650 patient and we took out the 464. So exactly balancing you know the number of the patients and if we if we uh, see the, uh, the the patient characteristics in both the group they were also uh, you know almost matching the uh, uh, each other like we see in the clinical trial data so the patient characteristic which was well balanced in the propons propensity score matched cohort and compared to paloma 2 older population more bone only disease less endocrinal sensitive disease and less visceral disease were also included in the uh, this trial and this this is the flat iron study real world progression free survival and these are the unmatched analysis for the all comer patients and you can see that even this also there is a clear cut uh, benefit in the unadjusted analysis of progression free survival as well as the unadjusted analysis in the overall survival but after the propensity score matching is adjusted analysis in the progression free survival and overall survival you can see that the uh, separation of the curve very early in the course of the uh, treatment and uh, the overall survival which was questioned in the uh, trial data was very well evident uh, in the propensity uh, score matching when we took the uh, real world data out so it was uh, two year overall survival of palgo plus letrozole versus letrozole alone was finally came out to be 80% versus 63%. So this was a clear cut, clear cut evidence that there is an overall survival advantage uh, with palgocyclic and letrozole as well as we have seen with the other molecule uh, in the trial data. So very well, uh, very impressive overall survival data both for the letrozole and but much much better with the combination of letrozole plus palgocyclic and this is the forest cloud curve which is uh, you know telling you the same story that the patient who were put on uh, palgocyclic plus letrozole were benefited across all groups and there is uh, only one group or other that were not benefited but uh, if you uh, clearly see the forest cloud curve uh, the all the patient group were uh, enormously benefited using the combination of uh, palgocyclic and the CDK46 inhibitor. So the final take home message from the real world data using uh, the propensity score matching is that letrozole and palgo combination remains the standard first line treatment and the palvestrant plus palgo doesn't seem to be a better option. The main message from the real world data is that the magnitude of superior efficacy with the first line palgo and letrozole over the letrozole monotherapy is achievable, achievable in the real world practice when treating a more heterogeneous expanded population while the toxicity are within the uh, range seen in the pivotal trial or the clinical trial. And this is the flat iron was the first comparative effective analysis of palgocyclic plus aromatase inhibitor therapy with aromatase inhibitor therapy alone from a large cohort of the patient in routine clinical practice in the United States. Uh, in the real world setting, the first line palgocyclic plus letrozole is more effective than letrozole alone in a heterogeneous population and among various patient subgroups. And after the propensity match scoring, the progression free survival uh, with a hazard ratio of 0.4, while the overall uh, hazard ratio for overall survival was 0.58, as we have up 
appreciated in the clinical trial data. So the real world data really complement the superior clinical efficacy observed with the CDK46 inhibitor in the randomized clinical trial, supporting the use of falbo in combination with aromatase inhibitor as a standard of care for first line treatment for patient with hormone receptor positive and HER2 negative metastatic breast cancer. Although median overall survival was reached uh, in the letrozole alone group also as I have shown you in the survival curve, the significant censoring in the overall survival analysis highlights that the uh, we need a longer follow-up and the uh, overall survival in the combination group will become more appreciable then. So choosing wisely in 2021, which CDK46 eventually uh, will you choose? So uh, the one thing which intrigued me very much uh, was that because we are using these drugs in the first line setting. So patient has to take this drug for a longer period of the time and uh, these are, you know, good number of the patient are premenopausal patient with uh, some or the other kind of comorbidity. So what Im becomes important is the major drug interaction. While uh, uh, the data from the palbocyclib and amebacyclib are quite identical that there were 67 to 68 major drug interactions, while in ribocyclib there were 259 major drug interactions. So this uh, really become a matter of concern. So uh, you have all the uh, CDK46 inhibitor available to you uh, and will be available to each and every medical oncologist in 2021. But finally, the choice is yours. You should use the best molecule. You should use a uh, uh, safest molecule and you should use the molecule for, uh, for which the uh, experience is, uh, you know, across the globe is much wider than the uh, other molecules. Thank you very much for your kind attention.